movies and 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 just kind of really being consumed like <laughs> I want a piece of that and I want to learn how to do that because yeah, uh, yeah you don't want to repeat yourself you always want to keep moving forward sure. and I think I just I was in a in a good mood yeah. feeling happy what did you discover about him that you didn't know um, as an actor um, <clears throat> It, well, I think I got. I think I, I. I think I got even luckier than I thought I might get. It was like striking gold. Just his. Yeah. Most of all, his. Um, the work ethic, like, the ability to work really hard for a really long period of time, really yeah. intensely, and still have an amazing, <laughs> amazing sense of humor and humanity. And humanity. Yeah. Well, did you Did you know? I mean, what What is this work ethic about? I mean, is it just simply that this is what you enjoy doing, uh, mm. and you're on a wave, and let's ride it? I I gotta tell you, I've been kind of having since I'm 17. I wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be good at what I did, and I wasn't that great at it for a long time. I don't ever think I became a master, but I get I'm still trying to grow. But uh, it's consumed my head. It's it's what I woke up thinking was I want to be good I want to write jokes I want to I want to get become comfortable as an actor uh, and I think that's what drives me is that I'm I'm kind of uh, obsessed with it yeah. um, I I I just I, you know I was doing Paul's movie I've seen Paul's other movies I thought they were incredible and I knew he wrote an incredible script so I said I bet I I better step it up in my head and I, I didn't want to fail and you're continuing to grow in your sense I mean, you feel you're growing expanding I, and, and I, you're just a halfway there wherever there is I don't know where I'm going I know I'm 36 years old and I have <clears throat> different thoughts than I had when I was uh, 26 but uh, and I don't know what I'm gonna think about when I'm 46 so I but I, I know I want to continue trying to travel with uh, in my career with what I'm thinking about and that's the job. That's the job is figuring out where you're at yeah. at that moment, and yeah. you do that then. And then by the time it's over with, you usually you want to go the other way. Yeah, and it's <coughs> trusting your instincts, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> trusting your instincts. And but you've also got to be. I mean, you got to. I would assume to have the phenomenal box office success he's had. You know, there's something behind that. There's an. Uh, there. I mean, there is trusting your instincts, but you you are delivering something to an audience. Yeah, you want. there's some sense of insight, intelligence. Yeah, I magic. I, I would say that Adam. I've, I've walked down the street with movie stars, and I've never seen anything like it when Adam walks down the street. <laughs> what it's, happens? It's the they the res, his he's there. He's present. He's exactly. he's not somewhere else. And and they people just respond to that, and that's what I respond to. Yeah. How do you? Yeah. How many films do you have that haven't been released right now? Oh, I I, I have. Paul's film. I have uh, an animated movie coming out, and uh, it's a uh, holiday movie coming out uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. Shot a movie with the great Jack Nicholson. Yeah, which one was that? That's called Anger Management. Yeah. He's unbelievable in it, yeah. and uh, that'll come out next year. I don't know. I'm I'm working a lot, but that's that's now I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Don't, wait, what do you wait, mean? I, I I'm not. I don't have anything. Uh, you have nothing to do now. You can take some time off. No, 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 no. I I, I don't want to. God forbid. Right. No. And I don't want to really have to think think yeah. too much about myself. I need to jump into the work yeah. and uh, and lose yourself in the keep work. Keep hiding. I yeah. keep hiding. I don't want to. I don't want any. I don't want to get to know me. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> it's pathetic. <laughs> now, what about Barry Egan? Is he pathetic? Uh, I think uh, he's pretty. Uh, what? Savvy? So what? Pretty. An actor's long? never going to say his character's pathetic in no. a movie. No, no. He's, he, no. I, he gets, he's pathetic at times. So yeah. I feel very easy. What's the phone sex thing about? I think that's lo loneliness. loneliness. Wanting to talk. He's, I don't think he's that. Uh, I mean, every, from a lot of other men. Right. <laughs> well, man, th this guy, he's not, I don't think it's a, a sexual call as much yeah. as he wants to actually talk yeah. to somebody. And, yeah. and, you know, maybe at the end of uh, the scene, he is, a, he is a man. He gets excited about some of the things the, the lady's talking about. Yeah. Thank God we don't see that. <laughs> I was going to say, we don't have that clip. No, no, you don't want to see that ever in real life either. All right, one more clip here before we move on to some other things. Uh, this is where Lena, played by Emily Watson, comes to visit Barry at his office. Take a look. This is good. You're busy. Yeah. Well, not really. I saw a picture of you. Oh, yes? Elizabeth has a picture of you guys, your sisters and you. 
It's a lot of family. It must be nice. Do you have brothers or sisters? No. I'm the exact opposite. That must be nice. That must be really, really, really... No, it's terrible. What's the pudding for? That's something else. Can we get pancakes? Yes, we are. Are you going up? Uh, you won some awards for this. But you scr after the first two weeks of filming, you just scrapped it. Yeah. What? Well, well, I think we were just trying to find our footing and trying to figure out what the hell we were doing. And we had, I think I tried to figure out a plan on making this movie. Well, normally you go and <coughs> you've, got a, you've got a schedule. You're going right. to make that schedule and you're going to do that. Right. But after having done it a few times, I sort of figured out how to spend the money properly. And not that I'd ever wasted before, but essentially you can shoot for a lot longer than you might normally think. It's just a sort of about proper money management. So it enabled us to really take our time. And well, the first couple of weeks, I think, well, there's some stuff that remained, but essentially yeah. we were just trying to find our footing. Yeah. And we'd get, or somebody might say, get your rhythm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and, I, and once it happened, you sort of look back, you go, okay, now, now we're getting to work. So you sort of throw yeah. some things out the window, but still stuff remained, so it wasn't completely a wash. But, um, but it was the luxury that came right. from just learning more about how to budget the movie and make it last. Do you think of yourself as a, as a comedian who acts, or do you simply think that you have gone from being a comedian now, settled into that you are an actor? Boy, I don't know. I, never, I don't think about what I, what, you what, are. what I am too much. I, 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 do, I was obsessed with comedy, and I still am. And, but I also, you know, I went to college, I studied acting. It was in, on my mind too to, to, to just be an actor, so I'm not exactly sure what the hell yeah. I am. What's the best comedic experience you've ever had? I mean, is it Saturday oh, Night Live? I mean, where, the, who, the, who taught you the essential sort of skills? Oh, well, uh, these two guys at Saturday Night Live, Robert Smigel and Jim Downey, yeah. were my, uh, uh, I became very close with them, and they, they, they I, I think, uh, the writers that I laugh the most at, yeah. at their stuff, and, and I love their taste. And I'm not saying they love my taste, but I'm saying that uh, if yeah. they laughed at something I did at, at when Wednesday's read through, we would read a skit, and if I looked up and saw Downey laugh, and I knew that uh, life was good right there. Are you born with timing, or do you learn? <clears throat> I think you learn uh, uh, confidence. So that's yeah. what that's what yeah, happened exactly. with me. I, I was my timing was. I don't. Yeah, I can tell when I'm not funny. It's usually when I'm rushing and when yeah. I'm kind of scared and show, show the audience and sees I'm scared. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling comfortable, it's usually all right. It's, it's, it's about everything, isn't it? I mean, it's true about sports. It's true about a right. tennis stroke or mm -hmm. a golf right. stroke. Yeah. It's true about this. It's true. If, you, if the confidence gives you an ease that definitely, yeah, that, it that makes you do it. Allows you to do it better. If you see a, a pitcher looking a little nervous to face a batter, he's usually you usually can yeah. tell he's he's not going to pitch too well. Exactly right. I mean, and, and pitchers who intimidate as if they, right. uh, you know, mm -hmm. I've got your number and here exactly, comes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Clemens scares you. Yeah, Clemens scares you <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Yeah, Clemens yeah, scares yeah. you. Yeah. Emily Watson. Yeah, she's. Why'd you cast her? She's uh, I've been a fan since Breaking the Waves. Yeah, oh and, man, right. And you just figure, yeah, you just see somebody give a performance like that. It's the same thing as with Adam. You think they've got they got balls. I, I want to be around them. I want to jump yeah. off a cliff with them. You know, someone that daring. And um, and I think that I had in my mind, if you're mm -hmm. making a romantic comedy where two people fall in love, you want they have to be a handsome couple. Right. You know, it's like. Prerequisite, and I thought that the two of them together made a handsome couple. That's good. Handsome couple. Well, you know, as good as I could get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, kind of, it's like 80 20. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is your audience, you would know more about this, and perhaps, perhaps you don't even think in terms of sort of this kind of analysis. Is your audience predominantly young, teenage guys? Well, I is think that, it, I've I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. I mean, I, I I think that's what's written a lot about. Yeah, I know. Me. That's why I'm giving you a chance to say. And, it. and it's it's. I happen to know a lot of babes watch me. I oh I don't know about that. <laughs> I know I don't know. Uh, I I just know, I have different different. Uh, people who talk yeah, to me about my movies. Well, uh, probably many people watch his movies, as we believe, 
then all of them that are there. The entire world. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's different age groups, yeah, but right. it doesn't matter. I like. I like. I, I have seen a lot of stuff where they say I, yeah, Adam exactly. Sandler's just young boys, but I talk to some uh, my mother's friends think I'm all right too. <laughs> well, I, they, have, yeah. they have a bit of bias there. Well, don't well even the ones who don't like her think I'm all right, <laughs> which is a big, big uh, yeah. percentage. Yeah. And what do you think of all these comparisons you see between you and Jim Carrey? Oh, well, I, I think it's natural for that to happen. I know Carrey since I'm a young guy, since I'm, yeah. I know him since I'm like 22, and I, I love him, and uh, we're both comedians, and... He's the he, best physical comedian.